As a wildlife photographer, there are certain places that are a must-see, and for me, this is certainly one of them. After arriving in Bali, I travelled for two days on various buses and ferries to the island of Flores, which is just east of Komodo National Park and my destination for this episode. When you look into their eyes, they really look back at you. You can sense a level of intelligence, like they're sussing you out. And it can be quite intimidating. So I'm on Komodo Island in Indonesia and uh, obviously in front of me I've got a stunning Komodo dragon. These guys can grow up to three meters and in excess of 70 kilos. You can just sense the strength and it's such an immense animal. And surprisingly calm and patient. It's as if they, they're well aware of their own strength and they don't need to prove it. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. And I'm lucky to be surrounded by two at the moment, one far off behind me and this one here. Pretty relaxed. No doubt a little more relaxed than myself. In 2009, it was discovered that Komodo dragons actually have venom glands. A dragon will bite down with its serrated teeth and pull back with its powerful neck, leaving a large gaping wound. The toxin-loaded venom then lowers blood pressure, causes massive bleeding, prevents clotting and induces shock. This, combined with a variety of bacteria from the dragon and the environment, doesn't leave much chance for the prey animal, and it will most likely succumb one way or another. The Komodo's hunting behaviour is actually quite unique for reptiles, as they often hunt and eat in groups. Carrion makes up a large portion of their diet, but they also hunt the Java deer and buffalo. Like other monitor species, they use their forked tongues to taste and smell stimuli. As the tongue retracts into the mouth, it touches the opening of the Jacobson's organ where it's interpreted by the brain. It's believed they're capable of detecting carrion up to almost six miles away. Komodos are protected under Indonesian law and Komodo National Park was actually founded specifically to protect them. They're listed as vulnerable by the IUCN. I wanted to capture images from a unique perspective, as well as get up close and personal. It's easy to capture images using a telephoto lens, and I did, of course. But it has been done before, so my idea was to capture more environmental images using a wide angle lens. To do that, I had to get the camera right in the dragon's face. That's not exactly something you want to do with a wild Komodo dragon. So I designed what I call the dragon rig, which I controlled using a remote trigger. I was able to easily roll the rig into place without threatening the dragons and instead piquing their curiosity, which has the added benefit of plenty of tongue action as the dragons try to determine exactly what it is.
I've been a reptile lover since I was a little girl. It's been a dream of mine to photograph the Komodo dragon in the wild, and now I can tick that off my bucket list, but it's only fueled my passion more and I cannot wait to go back. That's an impressive animal.